What's going on, smart people? I am back from Charlottesville and back in front of YouTube's favorite doors. I'm also back from Jefferson Lab where I spent pretty much the entire day going over relativistic kinematics. So kinematics meaning how things move, relativistic kinematics meaning how things move relativistically. Who'd have thought? More specifically, how this applies to high energy collisions and getting used to a certain coordinate system that simplifies the math a little bit when talking about these collisions. When it comes to special relativity, there's a certain type of vector that's used pretty frequently and it's called a four vector. And say you want to talk about position, well there's a position four vector that consists of one component being the time part and three components for the space x, y, and z, or whatever your three basis vectors uh, for position are. Now the length of this four vector is said to be an invariant quantity, meaning it doesn't change depending on your reference frame. And say you were to take out that time part of the four vector, well, if you were to measure the length of this vector, all that tells you is the definition of the Pythagorean theorem. So in flat space, without the time part, what this gives you is the definition of a straight line. Now what's lurking in the background here is the quantity that contains the information pertaining to how to calculate distances between two points. And believe it or not, this kind of changes depending on whether or not your space is curved or not. And this quantity is called the metric tensor. And I'm going to talk a lot more about that once I actually start the series on tensor calculus. Now, if you're just working in flat space and you're not interested in the time part of the four vector, then that just reduces to a normal three vector, something that just has three components of space. And when you're doing that in flat space, that metric just reduces to the identity matrix, which is a very fancy way of just saying you're multiplying each term by one. And for the most part, that's why it's not necessary to learn anything about tensors when you take a class in like Euclidean geometry. I think I'm getting a little ahead of myself here and I don't want to spend the whole video talking about tensors. What's important is that I've been working with these things called four vectors, which are a little bit more complicated than regular vectors in that they have four components, one of which is usually time related, and the length of these four vectors is invariant. The reason I brought up the metric in the first place is because if you want to change variables from say x, y, z to some other coordinate system, the metric itself also has to change in order to preserve that invariance. So my project is interested in relativistic collisions between particles, and if you fix your z-axis in the direction that these particles are colliding in, uh, you can simplify calculations a lot by using these things called, by using this coordinate system called light cone variables. And becoming more familiar with that coordinate system and seeing how it affects that metric was mainly the goal for today. Maybe in a future video I'll actually show you how to do things like uh, the four vector equivalent of a dot product between two four vectors, because in order to do that you actually have to incorporate the metric tensor into that, and that's kind of cool to see. I understand that this video might be a little bit hard to follow, um, but because so many people actually did request that I go through with that mini-series on tensors, I'm going to follow through with that. I'm going to start at the very beginning and start to motivate the things that I am currently doing. And I'm actually really looking forward to that because it'll be nice to have a series of videos where I get to say exactly what is correct instead of videos like this where what I'm saying is a little bit hand-wavy and that's kind of at the cost of being maybe a little bit incorrect or a little bit crude with my definitions. So I get that this video might be a little frustrating to both sides, both to the people who have very minimal exposure to things like four vectors, special relativity, tensors, so I might just be speaking at a level that's a little bit above where you're at right now, and to the other side of the people who might be very comfortable with this stuff and might be saying, Andrew, that's not quite a proper definition of a metric. So really I'm just trying to meet in the middle here, but in the future, I am, like I said, I'm looking forward to making the more rigorous videos. I'm not the type of person to go below the middle. I, I, there are plenty of resources out there that will oversimplify things and compromise uh, what things are for what things are like and throw tons of analogies that way. That's not my thing. I don't like to do that. Um, so this is kind of the least that I'll give you, but I'm looking forward to the more mathematically correct version of this. So to some of you, this might not look like pretty math or, or whatever the case may be, but to, I just want to show you what I'm actually doing. That's the whole point of this channel. Uh, let me know in the comments section, what's your favorite tensor? And I'll see you guys there.